11 now. It's a nervous night for residents of Fairlawn, New Jersey, wondering if it will happen again. For about a week there, the area has been plagued by loud, booming sounds. Problem is, no one knows where the sound is coming from. We were like looking at each other like, what was that? <laughs> Dodge County, people wondering, what was it? Yeah, what caused this boom? Was it a force of nature or a different kind of... a.m. until 4.30 a.m. Um, in Tarzana in Los Angeles. There was a very loud sound coming from the sky that sounded like a didgeridoo. Is that Jesus Christ? Please. Please, oh Father God. Mom, it's un hombre. It's un hombre. Jesus, is that you? God, what is it? Papa Morales was outside his house in Burbank, California when he saw something strange in the sky. The unidentified floating object looks like a person descending from the clouds. Is that Jesus Christ? In the video, Pablo can be heard telling his family he thinks it's the second coming of Jesus, telling his mother in Spanish it looks like a man. Mom, es un hombre. On that night, two powerful beams of light were shining as a memorial to the victims of the September 11th terrorist attacks. A man snapped this photo of the memorial, but when he got home, he saw what looked like a human figure. And although it's not clear what caused either of these...
bro. Look at these clouds. What is going on? What is that? But look over there. There's a circle one that's separated. Cloud. Yeah. It's like a missing puzzle piece or something. What is going on here? With these clouds. seven seals. In the intricate tapestry of Revelation, the inaugural tome of the New Testament, lies a profound symbol a scroll, tightly ensconced with seven seals. These seals, as depicted in the sacred text, foreshadow a succession of apocalyptic cataclysms, serving as harbingers of Christ's imminent return and the dawn of the eschaton. Unfolding across the pages of Revelation, from chapters 5 to 8, the prophecy of the seven seals emerges from the visionary experiences of John the Apostle during his exile on the desolate Isle of Patmos. Within this celestial vision, it becomes apparent that none among mortals or celestial beings can claim the authority or righteousness requisite to break the seals and unveil the scroll's mysteries, not even the most devout servants of the Almighty. The weight of this realization burdens John's soul evoking a profound sorrow as he grapples with the uncertainty of whether anyone exists with the capacity to decode the prophetic revelations contained within the sealed scroll. Yet, in the midst of John's despair, a revelation unfolds. An elder, a wise harbinger of hope, appears to assuage John's distress, revealing the presence of one worthy to break the seals and unfurl the scroll the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. This enigmatic figure, celebrated for his lineage and divine authority, embodies the power to unravel the scroll's enigmatic contents. While for many this figure unequivocally represents Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God, theological interpretations vary among different branches of Christianity, with some identifying the scroll's bearer as God himself. Against the backdrop of human history, amidst the turbulence of the COVID-19 pandemic, 
that gripped the world in the early months of 2020, the echoes of Revelation's prophecies reverberated anew. Some biblical scholars, attuned to the signs of the times, speculated that the unfolding events mirrored the imagery of the initial four seals. Though empirical evidence remains elusive, compelling arguments have been made, suggesting a parallel between current global crises and the prophetic warnings of Revelation. As you engage with today's discourse, I invite you to reflect upon these profound mysteries, to contemplate the timeless truths encapsulated within the sacred scriptures, and to discern for yourself the significance of these prophetic revelations in our contemporary world. What are the seven trumpet? The next prophetic sequence in the book of Revelation is the seven trumpets, a series of significant events described from Revelation 8-2 to chapter 11. These events are narrated from the vision that John witnessed in a manner similar to when he saw the seals. First trumpet, when the first trumpet is sounded, a great storm with fire and blood inundates the earth, causing destruction to a portion of it. Second trumpet, when the second trumpet is sounded, a star falls from the sky to the earth, causing a great explosion in the sea, turning a portion of the sea into Third trumpet, when the third trumpet is sounded, a great star falls from heaven, causing a portion of the rivers and water sources to become poisonous, resulting in many deaths. Fourth trumpet, when the fourth trumpet is sounded, a portion of the sun, moon, and stars in the sky are extinguished, creating a gloomy and anxious darkness over the whole world. Fifth trumpet, when the fifth trumpet is sounded, a seemingly infernal creature arises, bringing destruction and torment to those not sealed by God. Sixth trumpet, when the sixth trumpet is sounded, a vast army of giant locusts from the east is unleashed, causing widespread warfare and harm to a large portion of the world's population. Seventh trumpet, when the seventh trumpet is sounded, there is a loud roar in heaven, marking the appearance of God's ultimate power and the end of this era, culminating in God opening a new scroll and initiating a new creation. The events of the seven trumpets and the seven seals are intricately linked as part of the prophetic narrative presented in the book of Revelation. While the seven seals unveil a series of catastrophic events leading up to the end times, the seven trumpets amplify these tribulations with further calamities and judgments upon the earth. Each series of events builds upon the other, with the opening of the seven seals setting the stage for the sounding of the seven trumpets. The seals unveil the initial stages of divine judgment, while the trumpets herald the escalation and intensification of these judgments. Furthermore, the seven trumpets can be seen as a response to the prayers of the saints depicted in Revelation 8.3.5, indicating a divine response to the suffering and persecution endured by God's people. The seven seals lay the groundwork for the unfolding of end-time events, while the seven trumpets amplify and expand upon these events, ultimately leading to the culmination of God's redemptive plan for humanity. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse the four horsemen of the apocalypse, shrouded in the mystique of prophecy and symbolism, stride forth from the pages of Revelation, wielding metaphysical authority over the realms of disease, war, famine, and death. As the narrative unfolds in chapter 6 of this apocalyptic tome, each horseman emerges as a spectral harbinger of imminent catastrophe, their presence casting a shadow over a quarter of the earth's expanse. In the ethereal musings penned by biblical scholar Fred de Tolo for the trumpet in 2005, he articulated a somber warning echoed through the corridors of time the resounding cadence of the horseman's thunderous hooves grows ever louder, heralding the inexorable approach of calamity. He postulated that the final horseman awaited only the ignition of a virulent plague capable of ensnaring a quarter of humanity in its grip. The eruption of the COVID-19 pandemic in the early throes of 2020 reignited fervent discourse surrounding D. Tolo's prophetic musings. Many beheld the pandemic as the fulfillment of the fourth seal, a sobering realization that catapulted discussions of eschatological significance into the forefront of public consciousness. By the waning months of 2021, grim statistics from the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy bore testament to the staggering toll exacted by the virus, with approximately 43% of the global populace, a staggering 3.8 billion souls, succumbing to its insidious spread. Yet, even ere the pandemic's toll reached such staggering heights, the digital ether hummed with speculation, with denizens of cyberspace conjecturing feverishly on the pandemic's portentous symbolism in the grand tapestry of prophecy. If indeed the COVID-19 pandemic serves as the fulcrum upon which the fourth seal turns, 
It portends that three more seals must be rent asunder ere the denouement of history unfurls in the triumphant return of Christ. But ere we delve into the enigma of these subsequent seals, let us first unravel the mysteries enshrouding the four horsemen, those spectral riders who gallop on the precipice of eternity, their steeds bearing the weight of humanity's fate. The term apocalypse with its roots tracing back to the Greek language carries profound significance, denoting not just an end of the world scenario, but a grand unveiling of divine revelations. In the mystical tapestry of the book of Revelation, the Apostle John stands as the conduit through which these celestial visions are conveyed, offering a glimpse into the eschatological drama that unfolds in the twilight hours preceding the second advent of Christ. Enshrouded in mystery and awe, the prophetic narrative discloses a triadic cascade of judgments, culminating in cataclysmic upheaval that reverberates across the cosmos. Within the hallowed pages of Revelation, spanning chapters 6 to 18, are unveiled the seal, trumpet, and bold judgments, each heralding divine retribution upon a world teetering on the brink of spiritual collapse. Echoing the solemn warnings of Jesus himself, recorded in the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and Mark, the impending era is dubbed the Great Tribulation, a crucible of suffering and upheaval unparalleled in human history. Against this apocalyptic backdrop, the seal judgments emerge as the initial volleys in God's symphony of divine justice, unveiling the inexorable march of providence. At the heart of these judgments lies a scroll, held fast by seven seals, symbolizing the deed to the earth and the inheritance rightfully belonging to Christ, the Lamb who was slain. With reverent solemnity, John beholds the Lamb, the sole worthy recipient of divine honor and authority, as he breaks each seal, unleashing upon the earth corresponding judgments that echo across the ages. Emerging from the celestial tableau are four horsemen, ethereal embodiments of conquest, war, famine, and death, each riding forth at the behest of celestial beings, their visages veiled in the numinous glow of divine mandate. The first horse, a resplendent steed of alabaster hue, bears a rider adorned with a regal crown and brandishing a bow, emblematic of sovereignty and dominion. Yet beneath this veneer of majesty lies a portentous truth the rider, often interpreted as the Antichrist, emerges as a harbinger of false peace and deceptive promises, ensnaring humanity in a web of treachery and deceit. In the fulcrum of this revelation lies the ominous prophecy of Daniel, foretelling the Antichrist's mastery of manipulation, using the guise of peace to sow seeds of destruction. Thus the seal judgments serve as the prologue to the grand drama of eschatological upheaval, a prelude to the cosmic conflict between the forces of light and darkness, wherein divine sovereignty contends with human folly and the destiny of creation hangs in the balance. The term apocalypse, with its roots tracing back to the Greek language, carries profound significance, denoting not just an end of the world scenario, but a grand unveiling of divine revelations. In the mystical tapestry of the Book of Revelation, the Apostle John stands as the conduit through which these celestial visions are conveyed, offering a glimpse into the eschatological drama that unfolds in the twilight hours preceding the second advent of Christ. Enshrouded in mystery and awe, the prophetic narrative discloses a triadic cascade of judgments, culminating in cataclysmic upheaval that reverberates across the cosmos. Within the hallowed pages of Revelation, spanning chapters 6 to 18, are unveiled the seal, trumpet, and bold judgments, each heralding divine retribution upon a world teetering on the brink of spiritual collapse. Echoing the solemn warnings of Jesus himself, Recorded in the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and Mark, the impending era is dubbed the Great Tribulation, a crucible of suffering and upheaval unparalleled in human history. Against this apocalyptic backdrop, the seal judgments emerge as the initial volleys in God's symphony of divine justice, unveiling the inexorable march of providence. At the heart of these judgments lies a scroll, held fast by seven seals, symbolizing the deed to the earth and the inheritance rightfully belonging to Christ the Lamb who was slain. With reverent solemnity, John beholds the Lamb, the sole worthy recipient of divine honor and authority, as he breaks each seal, unleashing upon the earth corresponding judgments that echo across the ages. Emerging from the celestial tableau are four horsemen, ethereal embodiments of conquest, war, famine, and death, each riding forth at the behest of celestial beings, their visages veiled in the numinous glow of divine mandate. The first horse, a resplendent steed of alabaster hue, 
bears a rider adorned with a regal crown and brandishing a bow, emblematic of sovereignty and dominion. Yet beneath this veneer of majesty lies a portentous truth the rider, often interpreted as the Antichrist, emerges as a harbinger of false peace and deceptive promises, ensnaring humanity in a web of treachery and deceit. In the fulcrum of this revelation lies the ominous prophecy of Daniel, foretelling the Antichrist's mastery of manipulation, using the guise of peace to sow seeds of destruction. Thus the sealed judgments serve as the prologue to the grand drama of eschatological upheaval, a prelude to the cosmic conflict between the forces of light and darkness, wherein divine sovereignty contends with human folly and the destiny of creation hangs in the balance. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, we are forewarned of the fragile nature of the peace that ensues. The tranquility that may momentarily cloak the world will soon be shattered, a truth echoed by the Apostle Paul in his epistle to the Thessalonians. He vividly illustrates how sudden destruction will descend upon humanity, catching them unawares, akin to the unexpected onset of labor pains upon a pregnant woman. As the second seal is broken in Revelation chapter 6, verse 3 to 4, the earth is plunged into the chaos of war, symbolized by the emergence of a bright red horse. This rider, granted authority to strip away peace from the earth, unleashes a torrent of violence and bloodshed upon humanity. It is widely believed that this rider represents the culmination of the false peace brokered by the Antichrist, as well as other conflicts that erupt globally. The descriptor great attached to the sword wielded by the rider emphasizes the magnitude of the devastation that will ensue, while the nature of the sword itself, resembling a short dagger, conveys the intimate and brutal nature of the violence that will unfold. Jesus himself, in his prophetic Olivet Discourse, foretells of these tumultuous times, cautioning against alarm in the face of wars and rumors thereof. He predicts a time when nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, accompanied by famines and earthquakes, as recounted in Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 to 7. The arrival of the third horseman, depicted as riding a black horse, symbolizes the scourge of famine that will ravage the earth. With the opening of the third seal, scarcity becomes rampant, as illustrated by the scales held by the rider, signifying the careful rationing of food. The voice amidst the celestial beings echoes the exorbitant prices for basic sustenance, a denarius for a mere quart of wheat or three quarts of barley, while sparing the luxury commodities of oil and wine from harm. In Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 to 6, the profound impact of scarcity and famine is vividly depicted. A denarius, equivalent to a day's wage in the first century, scarcely affords enough to sustain an individual, with a quart of wheat barely meeting the needs of a single meal. Barley, typically considered fodder for animals, becomes a meager sustenance for the destitute, while oil and wine, essential culinary staples, become precious commodities. The scales wielded by the rider of the black horse symbolize a harsh economic system, providing just enough sustenance to endure a day's toil. This rationing system drives food prices to exorbitant levels, amplifying the suffering wrought by famine conditions, a testament to the devastating impact of the third horseman of the apocalypse. The arrival of the fourth horse and rider marks the culmination of the preceding judgments. As the fourth seal is broken, a pale horse emerges, its rider identified as death, accompanied by Hades, wielding authority over a quarter of the earth. The pale hue of the horse, akin to the color of chlorophyll, symbolizes the lifeless pallor of death, the inevitable consequence of warfare, famine, and pestilence. A staggering one quarter of the earth's population succumbs to the relentless onslaught of the four horsemen, underscoring the magnitude of the tribulation foretold by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. Yet, amidst the unfolding chaos and devastation, there remains a glimmer of hope. The wrath of God, as depicted in Revelation, offers a path to redemption through faith in Jesus Christ. His sacrificial death and triumphant resurrection pave the way for deliverance from certain judgment. However, for those who spurn this salvation, there exists no refuge from divine retribution, a sobering reality emphasized by the writer of Hebrews. Neglecting the opportunity for salvation leaves one vulnerable to the inexorable march of judgment, underscoring the urgency of embracing the offer of eternal life extended by the Lord Himself. Unity in Faith Let us pause, dear brethren, and listen intently to the stirring call of the Holy Spirit 
beckoning to those adrift amidst life's tempests. Along the arduous path we tread, amidst the gathering shadows cast by malevolent forces, the resplendent light of the Lord continues to shine with unwavering brilliance. Engaging in this cosmic struggle is not merely a solemn obligation but a sacred duty incumbent upon us, the faithful. Let us cling steadfastly to our faith, drawing inspiration from the luminous examples set by those who have gone before us like Daniel amidst the ravenous lions, like Joshua amid the crumbling walls of Jericho, like Paul, transformed by divine grace on the road to Damascus. In these trying times, as the world descends into the abyss of turmoil, our need for unity has never been more pressing. Let us raise our voices in fervent prayer not only for our own salvation but for the redemption of every soul yearning for the solace of divine light. Let us prepare our hearts and fortify our spirits for the trials that loom ahead, armed with courage and fortified by unwavering faith. In the sacred verses of Scripture, we find solace and reassurance, for it is written nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, Romans 8.39. Let us therefore take solace in the divine promise of the Lord's unfailing guidance and protection, even in the darkest of hours. Let us stand united, resolute against the encroaching darkness, against the malevolent schemes of demons and the nefarious machinations of evil. Let us strive to be beacons of hope, vessels of compassion, and conduits of divine love in a world shrouded in the pall of darkness. Let us endeavor to spread the timeless truths of God's word and the boundless compassion of His love to all who cross our path. With unity of purpose and unwavering faith in the Lord's providence, we can surmount every obstacle, weather every storm, and emerge victorious in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Let us therefore march forward, dear brethren, hand in hand, heart in heart, in unyielding solidarity and unshakable faith. For together, in the embrace of divine grace, we shall overcome, we shall endure, and we shall triumph. Amen. Amen.